on Prime Crime. What? I've been on the ground and there's blood everywhere. A seemingly freak event. Oh my God, my brother's dead. I had a little shank. Becomes a years long search for a killer. We didn't even see it coming. We had let a wolf into our family and not even known it. Hi there, everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Prime Crime. This is where we break down the most high-profile and memorable true crime cases. Back in the summer of 2017, a web of money, lies, and death is about to fall in the lap of Missouri investigators. And where this case begins is as surprising as where it ends. 911, the emergency. What? I've been on the ground, and there's blood everywhere. It's the afternoon of June 8th, 2017. Police receive a call from a snake breeding facility just outside of Columbia, Missouri. Do you know what happened to him? <laughs> the person on the phone is Lindley Rennick. She's explaining how she just found the dead body of her husband, 29-year-old Ben Rennick, on the floor surrounded by containers of snakes. When I went to the scene where my brother's body was found, Lily was outside crying hysterically and she was in distress. Something was obviously wrong. Do you know what happened? No. So he's not breathing at all? No, he's cold, he's blue. Does it look like he's been shot? Yeah, maybe. No, he got killed by a snake. I need to be out here now, please. You have to imagine how intense slash bizarre this scene was. I understand you have an anaconda. Where is it at? <laughs> I know it's difficult right now, but we need to make sure nobody else gets hurt. What is this? They smell snakes. Ben had become one of the leading uh, people in the world of uh, snakes, specifically breeding snakes. And he had a building that was just stuffed with these things. Is there a blood trail leading to him? Is there anything? There's nothing. Something got him. The paramedic said there's a bike mark on it, but watch your ass. One of the most striking things about the scene is the deputies walking into this environment and they're holding shotguns. They're afraid that they're gonna get attacked by a snake. Do we have anybody we can call to deal with an anaconda? I'm gonna kill it, we see it. Good, good. I prefer it that way. Sam assumed that the snakes had killed uh, his brother due to the types of injuries. But of course, that wasn't the case at all. The coroner, when he walks into the room and he sees Ben's body, he's thinking that there's something odd because there's a tremendous pool of blood. And then he happens to glance over and he notices on the shelf a spent bullet casing. He knew that this was something other than a snake bite. Ben had been shot multiple times. Now, investigators are dealing with a whole different kind of scenario. This was no longer an accident, but a murder. We couldn't have imagined a single person on the earth that would want to hurt Ben. Um, and obviously we were wrong. I know you've talked to uh, a handful of other people in a day about how your day went. But if you want to go ahead and walk us through it. Lindley Rennick is brought in to speak with investigators. She may be the key to figuring out who could have done this to Ben. I walked in the facility and I saw uh, his mom laying on the ground and there was a lot of blood and I called Sam. Investigators then question whether this could have been a family dispute turned deadly. Is there any family issues? Uh, like between Sam and uh, yeah, their mom passed away and then their dad shot himself. Ben and I actually own all of the property. My parents had fought for years, decades to keep that farm. My mother had died there, my father had died there, my brother had died there. Sam kind of basically just went to Ben and he was like, you need to give me half of the property. Then his wife sent Ben and I a message that was basically just kind of like, you, you guys are greedy, all you care about is money, and then everything just kind of fell from there. 
police looked at Ben's brother, Sam. As an investigator, you look at who is going to gain the most by killing someone. Have you developed any kind of a theory as to what do you think happened? My gut told me that Sam did it. I immediately I took a polygraph. I was at work when he was murdered. It wasn't hard to disprove me. Do you know what happened tonight? They don't. Do you have any questions for us? What happened? That's the question everyone wants answered. What happened that summer afternoon? Coming up, police may get some answers as another possible suspect comes into the mix. Who's, uh, who's Mike Hage? Michael and I dated for a while. This one, and that's all this seems like it's not real. And he's just going to come back. And everything will be okay. In June 2017, the body of Ben Rennick is found by his wife, Lindley Rennick, on the floor of his snake breeding facility in Montgomery County, Missouri. Initially thought to be killed by a snake, authorities soon realize they're dealing with a murder as Ben was shot to death. Lindley meets with investigators several times, and she shares a startling confession. If there is uh, another relationship, you know about that. So have you been talking to anyone, or did you have a relationship? Eric, he's my marketing rep. Lindley, the owner of a spa, admits she's been unfaithful in her marriage. She had had multiple affairs. It's estimated that Lindley had at least two lovers, in addition to her husband, maybe even a third. But Eric is not the only other man in Lindley's life. Who's, uh, who's Mike Hage? Uh, Michael Humphrey. Michael Humphrey was another uh, interesting character in, in this rather bizarre tale. Michael uh, is Lindley's ex-boyfriend. Michael and I dated for a while. He is a client um, I actually used to work on. Do you know anything about Ben's death? I know that the news said that there was an intruder do you know anybody that could do that too? Anybody with a gun could do that something. You had a weird way that you met back up. I think you can agree with that. Yeah. She had reached out to him, and it's it's hard to understand why. I think I'm just gonna lay it all out for you. I think you have some involvement with this. Maybe she saw utility uh, in Michael. The first time they came by, it was just like they wanted me to look at install some stereo stuff in her friend's car or whatever. I think it was the next time that Lynn came by. She said that she was having some different issues with her significant other. She started by letting him know that she was planning on divorcing Ben and that Ben had abused her. She said that he would abuse her and like that. I guess she wanted me to go with her out there to talk to Ben. Um, she says she can't leave. Via the Facebook messages between uh, Ben and Lindley, we learned that uh, she complained that Ben sexually assaulted her at night while she was asleep. Uh, there was a message where Ben seemed to apologize for doing so. Anyone that knew Ben uh, knew the kind of person that he was. The accusations that she proposed were preposterous. She had come down here for a reason. She's looking for some way to get out of the situation that she was in. Mike, she's got other guys in her life. They're all married with kids. They're all family guys with jobs. They're all the same kind of guy. Wow. You're the outlier. I ain't no sugar You know what I mean? I, I ain't no killer. After some back and forth, Humphrey does end up admitting he was at the snake facility when Ben was killed. She tried to hand me a gun, and I kind of just shoved it back at her. We walk up inside, and then all of a sudden, shots rang. I ducked like this, and I looked back up. She still got the gun out like this. I turned around and ran through the door. Michael Humphrey was drawn into this by Lindley, uh, perhaps just to aid her in the death of Ben, perhaps in order to cover it up, or perhaps to put the blame all on him. It's a good question to ask. What is Lindley's involvement, and where does her involvement began in his end or vice versa. I truly believe that she was the one that pulled the trigger. 
we had so many collaborating witnesses and they were still not able to finally say that she was the one to pull the trigger. But is Michael Humphrey telling the truth of what actually happened? Coming up, Lindley points the finger in a different direction. There had been this back and forth between Michael and Lindley, so confusion reigns. It's up to the police to kind of sort this out. I told you at the beginning of the day that we would both know at the end of the day whether you had any involvement in this whatsoever. It's summer 2017, and Missouri officials are investigating the mysterious murder of 29-year-old Ben Rennick. He was initially thought to have been killed by a snake at his reptile breeding facility, but it was soon realized he had actually been shot eight times. Ben's wife, Lindley, the owner of a local spa, is investigators' number one suspect. But another man in Lindley's life, her old flame, Michael Humphrey, is also believed to be involved. After months of investigating Lindley, investigators try something else. There was something there that gave the police pause with her, and they did, in fact, put her on a polygraph. Okay, how do you think you did, Lindley? The results of the polygraph showed that you failed the, the test. I didn't kill Ben. We did everything we could to support her after the murder. We started seeing some red flags right away, and so did the Highway Patrol. I don't think you were the trigger. There is a big difference between standing in front of somebody and pulling the trigger and asking someone to do it. I didn't plan my husband. We know you did. Uh, the Highway Patrol had a really good idea of what had happened. Things started coming together, and it was an ugly picture. Amid the interview, it becomes apparent there's something else going on in Lindley's life that raises even more suspicions. Was it because you needed money to keep your spawn going? Because I know that was important to you, and Ben was going to shut it down. The problem was, was that the spa was not doing quite so well, certainly not as well as Ben's business. Ben had no idea how in debt you were. He had no clue. He did not know that you were fifteen to $20,000 behind her bed. He was going to find out. She had been mismanaging the finances at her business. He was probably going to find out about the affairs as well, and that would have been a, a deal killer for him. Some will say that Lindley was cold-hearted and she needed some money, and she saw that as an opportunity to get some life insurance. We know you were involved. He had just taken out a $1 million insurance policy on himself. He had just sold a, his biggest transaction for about $1.2 million. The farm was in his name solely, and when he died, it went directly to Lindley. I'm seeking answers from you, Lindley. I don't have the answer. What about my color? I don't think he would do anything. Don't tell me. Investigators have a pretty good idea of who's behind Ben's murder. Yet there's still not quite enough evidence to charge anyone. So the investigation goes cold. When we return, will investigators finally learn the truth about Ben Rennick's death? My information is out of the horse's mouth. And by the horse, you mean Lindley? There is so much circumstantial evidence against you in this case. It's my body. In the summer of 2017, 29-year-old Ben Rennick is murdered at his snake breeding facility in central Missouri. His wife, Lindley Rennick, and her one-time boyfriend, Michael Humphrey, are both suspected of being involved, but there's not enough to charge the pair. However, in January 2020, there's an unexpected break in the investigation when someone comes forward with case-changing information. Ever since I found this stuff out, it's been in my head every day. The man Lindley was having an affair with, Brandon Blackwell, uh, came forward to the police, and that really got the ball rolling. I think Ben was getting to the point where he was going to leave her. She was sucking money out of him for her business, and their just relationship didn't, wasn't going well. I think they did suspect her uh, the entire time, but he told the police that he believed that Lindley had killed her husband. Her and Michael Humphrey 
They drove to the farm. She walks in with the gun and she just shoots him a bunch of times and leaves. Michael kept the gun, supposedly to dispose of. And investigators also had Ashley Shaw, Lindley's employee. I'll just cut to the chase. Yeah. You have been implicated in being a part of Ben's death. So it's basically you're either on Team Lindley or you're on Team Missouri, and Team Lindley's going to jail. Who became a cooperating witness for the government. You had the walls kind of start to close in on her. It was kind of like a game of musical chairs, and eventually Lindley was the only one left standing. After three years of investigating and more than a dozen interviews, Lindley Rennick and Michael Humphrey are both charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. There were moments where I had lost hope, but there was a lot of relief knowing that she was finally going to be held accountable. We didn't even see it coming. Ben had no idea. We had let a wolf into our family and not even known it. And it cost us dearly. Rennick and Humphrey are tried separately, with Humphrey's trial ending in a guilty verdict for first-degree murder. But after the trial, he makes a deal. His conviction was mitigated down to murder in the second degree. So Lindley's problem here was that the people that assisted her in committing crimes lined up against her and they ended up becoming witnesses against her at trial. She's been running this spot for about a year or so and it's not doing well. And ultimately he gives her a few months. So Lindley, who's also the sole beneficiary of the $1 million life insurance policy on Ben Rennick, decides she's got a little bit divorced, she's going to kill him. There was tremendous financial gain to be had on the part of Lindley. Certainly, the prosecution proved that through financial records, text messaging. It finally culminates in Ben's death. Did she discuss with you divorcing Ben? Yes. But she had told you that that wasn't an option for her? Right. Did she present to you or talk to you about a, a different manner of handling or resolving her marital issues? Yes. She asked if um, I could help her with murdering him. Well, from underneath the passenger seat, slides to the gun, my, my gun. I was freaking out a little bit, because it's my gun. You believe it just been used to do what? To, to shoot somebody. The defense must present a strong enough case to convince the jury that it wasn't Lindley, and part of that was pointing the finger at someone else. They make the very, very unfortunate decision to ask Michael Humphrey to go with Lindley Rennick to confront Ben about a divorce. What Lenny Rennick does not know is that in the seven years since she broke up with Michael Humphrey, Michael Humphrey has graduated into a violent, meth-addicted career criminal. You've got two primary suspects that are pointing the fingers at one another. You told the police on 116 that Lenny did this, right? All by herself. Right. You told them that because you knew the police suspected Lindley had done this, and you were trying to feed them a story that you thought that they would believe, correct? I told them that's because that's what happened. I think the defense did a good job with what they had to work with, and what they had to work with was chaos. We were confident going into the trial that the prosecution had everything they needed, uh, but we were aware that it just takes one juror, and she was definitely going to put on a show she was good at that kind of thing. She was too good at it, if you ask me. And who better to tell her own story than Lindley Rennick herself? Michael turned around, and I saw a gun in his hands, and then I heard shots ring out, and I ran outside, and everything just went numb. Lindley's argument, ultimately, was that Humphrey killed Ben. Do you regret ever getting back in contact with Michael Humphrey? Yes. Did you kill Ben Rennick? I did not kill my husband. Did you ask Michael Humphrey to kill Ben Rennick? No. She knew what she was doing when she got in that stand. Um, she stared directly at the jurors. She wore that cross that didn't belong on her neck and tried to portray herself as, as weak. But was it enough to convince the jury? After more than 11 hours of deliberations, a jury came back with a surprising verdict as to first-degree murder. Verdict. As to count one, we, the jury, find the defendant, Lindley Rennick, guilty of murder in the second degree 
I hope the 12 jurors never forgive themselves for what they've done. It was an absolutely unjust verdict. It is the judgment and sentence of this court that you be confined in an institution for a period of 13 years on count one and three years on count two. Lindley Rennick is sentenced to 16 years in prison. Lindley has a parole hearing scheduled for 2034, and she uh, is also certainly going to get credit for the time that she has served, so she could potentially walk out of prison at that time. You're awful lucky, ma'am. You're going to get out in your 40s, and my 40s weren't too bad. I just hope you don't kill again. She robbed the world of a brilliant mind, somebody that was well-respected in his little community, and not just locally, but throughout the world. And sadly, you've got a child that's grown up fatherless as a result of their mother. But the battle for Ben Rennick's family isn't over. She had isolated uh, my brother's children immediately after the murder. They were able to transfer custody from Lindley to her sister. They actually told the children that I was the one that murdered them even after the arrest. We have still not seen them one day, not one day since the murder. Nothing in life is fair, but some decisions can be not just selfish, but cruel. The not returning my brother's remains and keeping those children in the dark like they have is unforgivable. At the time of this recording, Lindley Rennick has officially dropped her appeal of her conviction. And by all accounts, she's going to serve out the remainder of her term in prison. It's interesting thinking about where this investigation began in a reptile facility, because it turns out the only real snake in this case was the woman who wanted her husband dead. That's all we have for you here on Prime Crime. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, stay safe.